Hello, welcome to the session on users. My name is Moses Namara. I'm a PhD student at Clemson University, and I'll be talking to you about our paper that looks the at emotional and practical considerations towards the adoption and abandonment of VPNs as a privacy enhancing technology. To give you an overview of this presentation, I will kick set off things with a, an introduction to VPNs and their usage. I will then go into our methodology of how we conducted this study. I will then talk about the results from uh, this study. And I will summarize with key takeaways about the adoption and usage of VPNs as a privacy enhancing technology. So to kick start things off, VPNs are secure communication tools that originally were developed to connect to remote sites. However, they have evolved into a consumer tool that affords users privacy and anonymity. Specifically, this is done through the alteration and routing of users' IP address via a provider's via a VPN provider's servers. Now, it is important to note that VPN, not all VPNs will offer privacy and anonymity based on their terms and conditions and based on their locations. And so then it's important to know how, how are VPNs currently being used. So in a study, in a report for about the VPN usage and trends around the world in 2018 by, Global Web, by the Global Web Index, they found that in Asia, in the Asia Pacific region, we have around 30% internet users and 23% in the Latin American uh, region, primarily using VPNs as a tool to access restricted and censored content. For Europe and uh, North America, the number was a little bit low uh, at uh, 18%. And VPN here is basically being used as a tool to connect to academic institutions or employers and as a privacy protection technology. And so these, this study and, and other factors led us to want to know what factors motivate users to adopt VPNs primarily as a pet. Uh, here we, when it comes to adoption of technology, there's a model known as the TAM model, the technology acceptance model, that says if a technology is to be widely adopted and used, then first of all it has to be uh, easy to use and, you, and it has to be useful to the user. And so these two constructs or these two factors are able to determine or influence users intention to use the technology in a long in, in the long haul however term looks at uh, a positive side um, and when it comes to vpns we're talking about a tool that has low adoption in terms of protecting users privacy and so we were asking ourselves VPNs are not hard to use. People already use them for accessing uh, content online, for school, for accessing, uh, reaching out to the employer network. And so what do we add to, uh, to term to go beyond this? And what are the barriers that people are facing when it comes to adopting VPNs, specifically for privacy purposes? In approaching this and, and trying to answer these questions, we we were careful in terms of wanting to get views from both users and non-users, uh, and this is important because most te most technology adoption studies will will study will focus on users, but we believed that it is for us to get a holistic overview in terms of what motivates users and what motivates people to adopt and use VPNs, it was equally important to look at the non-users. In addition, 
we're also guided by the risk as a feeling theory, which basically states that whereas it is known that people, when it comes to making a decision, and in this case, we're, talking, uh, we're looking at the decision, decision in terms of what a, if one wanted to use a VPN or not, they can go about it in two ways. Either they can go about it through a cognitive, a cognitive evaluation, which is basically uh, balancing between the risk and, and, and the benefit, or the risk of the feeling theory states that people can go about it through their emotions or their gut feelings. And when they do go make a decision based on their gut feelings, this, these feelings usually override the cognitive evaluation. And so that we thought that was interesting to, to, to our study in terms of understanding what are the differences in the adoption and usage of VPNs between users who mainly have practical or cognitive uh, versus emotional considerations. So in the next uh, few slides, I'll talk about the methodology, how we uh, conducted the study methodology. So we conducted a survey, and this survey had questions that inquired from users of their awareness and mental model about VPNs, their sentiment about VPNs, their adoption and usage behaviors of VPNs, primarily as a privacy enhancing technology, their motivation and barriers in using VPNs as a privacy enhancing technology, and the pros and cons of using VPNs as a privacy enhancing technology. When it came to recruitment, we were looking for a, a participant pool that had an awareness about what VPNs were and not necessarily did not necessarily have to use them but they at least had to know what they were and specifically we were also looking for people who used VPNs for privacy purposes and so this is this was uh, as you can imagine uh, hard to reach demographic and so we ended up going to Reddit forums specifically subreddits that were focused on uh, VPNs and we also sent out an email to computer science students who we believed would have had an experience using VPNs. In our survey also we segmented it around different user categories. So for example we had non-adopters and these were people who we had questions geared towards non-adopters, and these would be people who never knew about VPNs. We had questions geared around abstainers. These would be people who never used VPNs for privacy, but were aware of what VPNs were. We also had a category around abandoners, and these would be people who used VPNs for privacy protection, but stopped or, or had paused in their use. And we also had adopters who are currently using VPNs for privacy protection purposes. So we ended up having 90 participants. Uh, 39 came from Reddit and 51 were students. We, find, we found that 98% of these, of, of these participants were aware of what VPNs were. And of those, 42% actually were using VPNs specifically for privacy protection purposes. Of these participants, 81 were, were still at the time of taking this survey using uh, VPNs to protect their privacy, which was interesting. Where, but we still had 18% who had used and, and stopped. And so now I, I, I go into the results. What were the findings from this survey study? Uh, what we found for adopters, these are people who are currently using VPNs to protect their privacy, is that when you asked them what factors motivated them to use VPN in the first place, is they, they were reliant on their feelings about the fear they had of being surveilled by their internet, ser internet service provider or government. They had also gotten... Uh, they had experience, either they had been a part of privacy hacks in the past, 
all had read about privacy breaches which induced fear or induced the need for them to take care or take personal control of, of, of their privacy. Um, they also were worried of how their personal information is collected or accessed and used by various private, various online entities. And they disliked that there was no law or leg legislation in place that would entirely protect their privacy rights. And so we have, these are some of the, the, the quotes from our participants. Uh, and this is one that is basically relating to their fear of government or dislike or distaste for government surveillance. Um, and, and this is one that pertains to basically their experience and how they came to use VPNs. On the other hand, when we talk to abandoners, we found that basically their primary motivation to use VPNs was based on the consequences that would arise from an online activity that they were indulging in at the moment. And this tend, tended to be either they were pirating a site or they were, they were pirating a movie and they knew that uh, this was illegal and so they wanted some form of anonymity or privacy to basically obscure that internet activity and be able to accomplish the task securely. It's also important to note that the, the task may not necessarily be illegal or, or negative, but it, took, it, it, was a, it, was a, it could have been a noble task like uh, basically accessing your employer's network securely and maybe doing a secure doc document drop. And so when you compare these two categories of, 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 of groups of users, what you see is that adopters' reasonings for using VPNs are more feelings oriented, whereas abandoners' reasons seem to be practically were practically motivated. And so then we, we, we went further ahead and asked the abandoners what barriers they encountered in adopting VPNs. Why is it that they, they started, uh, they used, and, and then all of a sudden they stopped use of VPNs? And one, the reasons that we got were, first of all, that VPNs were burdensome to always engage when, when, when in use or when, when needed to be used. And then the VPNs that they use tended to have usability issues such as constant pop-ups, they were either slow and uh, lagging. Um, and also the cost was another barrier that was identified in terms of abandoners didn't really see the immediate and apparent benefit of using or transitioning to a paid VPN. They were also apprehensive about diving or giving up uh, their personal information such as their credit card information to a, to the to a VPN service uh, and you have to remember also based on the activity that they were indulging in it would have it wasn't a comfortable situation to uh, for them to just give up such information on the other hand when we look at adopters uh, uh, Contrary to abandoners, actually, for them, something like cost was actually an affordance. So they were able, they could afford to subscribe and pay for a reputable VPN application. And this payment or this decision was based on the capability and policy of that VPN provider. They also had the general distrust about free VPNs because first of all they believed that free VPNs weren't as reliable and they also didn't have features that paid VPNs had. And so when we investigate or when we examine the differences in usage of VPNs between users who mainly had practical or emotional considerations, what, you, what we found was that adopters basically embark on the use of VPNs 
primarily for privacy protection purposes based on their emotional consideration to the risk of their online privacy. As a result, they tended to be more resilient users. However, abandoners use VPNs based on the need to accomplish practical online activities, could be downloading a movie, could be uh, accessing or dropping a document uh, securely over, over, over a network. But once that need was no longer present, then they stopped the use of VPNs. And this is an important, this was an important finding because what we found is that people who, users who made, uh, in this case adopters, who make the decision based on an emotional or a, f a feelings driven perspective tended to be stick stickier users of VPNs as compared to uh, abandoners. And so let me go into the key takeaways then. So, so what does this all mean? So in our study, what we find is that, first of all, users have the right mental model of how VPNs work. They know how VPNs operate. Uh, the second is that adopters use VPNs primarily based on their emotional consideration of the risk to their online privacy, and as a result, uh, are resilient users. Abandoners, on the other hand, use VPNs to serve a particular temporal need after which they stop uh, in the use of, of, of VPNs. I would like to thank my co-authors, uh, Darisha, who supported me on conducting this study, Dr. Kane, and my advisor, uh, Dr. Bart Kainenberg. And I'm happy to take on any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have.